So ladies and gentlemen, um, basically on completing the square, the main important thing is we're going to want to follow along through this process. The first thing is we're going to want to isolate the variables. We're not actually, when I say isolate the variables, I'm not, I don't mean to solve for the variables. I basically just make sure to make sure your variables are on the same side. So you guys see in this equation, because remember when we were factoring, um, when we were looking into factoring, we got everything on the same side, so it was set equal to 0, right? Yes? So when completing the square, what I like to do is I just like to have the variables on the side equal to a value. And the reason why I do that is we are going to create a trinomial right here. That is what we call a perfect square trinomial. And if you remember from last class period, a perfect square trinomial is one that we can um, factor. That means the first and last term are squared terms. And that's a trinomial. We'll go through it. I'll go through it again quickly. So anyways, step number two, factor out the GCF. The LC must be 1. You guys can see the LC right here is 2. I have to factor that out. So I'm going to factor out a 2. When factoring out a 2, I'm left with k squared plus 8k equals negative 12. Does everybody follow me? Yes? Okay, now step number three. Determine value C that completes the square B divided by 2 um, add to both sides. So if you guys remember, when you have a quadratic equation, AX squared plus BX plus C, right? That is a quadratic equation. So when you have a quadratic equation equal to 0 or equal to y, whatever, a, b, and c. So basically, I want you guys to understand that b is the coefficient of your linear variable. So b in this case, once I factor out my 2, my b is what? 8. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do 8 divided by 2 and squared. That is going to give me the value that is going to complete the square. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So the way this works, I'm going to use color coding because I think this helps students the most. So it's k squared plus 8k plus 16 equals negative 12. Now, here's where it gets confusing. This is where students get mixed up. A lot of times, as long as they remember b divided by 2 squared, they're good. So I made up this. I did b divided by 2 squared to give me 16. The reason why this always works, this creates a perfect square trinomial. Do you guys remember factoring last class period? At the end of the class, this creates a perfect square trinomial. That's a squared number. That's a squared number. This can easily be factored. right? You don't even have to do the thing. You can say this would be x plus 4 times x plus 4 or x plus 4 squared. Does everybody follow me or does anybody want me to go through that again? But perfect square trinomials, you can easily factor. That's why, we can, that's why this is helpful. Now, here's the caveat. If you add a number to the left side of the equation, you can't just do that. You have to also add the number to the right side of the equation. So whatever you do on the left side, you have to do it on the right side, literally. I'm adding a 16 on the left side, but I'm actually not adding a 16. I'm adding a 16 that, because of distributive property, is being multiplied by 2. Agreed? So I'm really adding a 32. So that means over here, I need to multiply the 16 by 2 as well. Whatever you do on the left side, you have to do on the right side. I added 16, but I added 16 inside parentheses. Inside the parentheses, it's being multiplied by 2. So if you were to apply distributive property here, right, that's really a 32. So therefore, I also need to multiply this by 32. The first two examples that you guys have, the a is equal to 1. So you don't have to worry about multiplying your number. But whenever you factor a number out, you have to make sure that it's multiplied on both sides. Does anybody have any questions with that? No. Good. Yes? Question? No. So therefore, we need to factor to a binomial squared. This, again, ladies and gentlemen, just comes into your factoring techniques. So we have 2 times, making sure you guys understand that this is k plus 4, not k plus k, k plus 4 squared equals negative um, 12 plus 36 is going to be a 24. 32. 36. What am I doing? It's 32. It's 20. Thank you. OK, now last step 
is solve for your variable using inverse operations. So we have our variable. It's being added by 4 inside the parentheses. Then it's being squared. Then it's being multiplied by 2. So to solve for my variable, the first thing I need to do is divide by 2 on both sides. So I have k plus 4 squared equals 10. Now I undo the square root. Remember, when you introduce the square root, you have to include the plus and the minus. So it's plus or minus the square root of 10. Is there a square number that divides into 10? Can you break that further? Can you simplify square root of 10? No. Nope. So therefore, then I just subtract the 4. And my final answer is k equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 10. If you guys can simplify the radical, please do. And that's it.